What's up, guys? It's your boys, Awoki, back at it with some more Crime Talk. And obviously, Chris Watts is our main topic for Crime Talk today. We're going to be taking a look at how Dr. Phil even sees through Chris and Nicole's BS. Because people keep saying, or onesies and twosies, keep mentioning that, Zwoki, you're out of your mind. You don't know what you're talking about. You didn't do the research. You didn't. I'm telling you right now, Dr. Phil, this episode we're about to watch. I haven't seen myself, but I was told that I need to watch this episode. Even Dr. Phil sees every single thing that I, myself, all these other YouTubers are stating the same thing. And also more in depth on it as well when it comes to Nicole Kessinger and Chris Watts and their involvement in the murders. And even Dr. Phil even sees Nicole Kessinger's complete BS and why she was not looked at even deeper. So with that being said, what I want you guys to do is grab a chair, get comfortable, because we're about to watch Dr. Phil expose the crap out of Nicole Kessinger and Chris Watts in this investigation. So grab a chair, grab a, uh, grab that comfy uh, couch and blanket, and let's get into the video. But before we go any further, if you guys could do with me a solid favor, which you guys are doing fantastic on, there's 69% of you guys that are watching my videos, which thank you so very much, but are not subscribed. So make sure you guys consider subscribing by hitting that wiper icon down at the bottom right, hit that bell icon next to it. So when I do post videos like this one, you guys will get that little ring notification that I posted that video. And then you guys can watch, comment, like, and share. It's free to do, it's easy to do, and we're trying to get to 50K so I can give you guys a meta quest three for free and then at a hundred thousand subscribers i'm giving away two more meta quest three bundles and i would love to give them to you guys before christmas because then you guys can get for some free stuff and i feel like santa claus but with that being said let's get in the video and see what dr phil completely states about nicole kessinger and chris watts i know i keep saying nicole kessinger but she's my main target in trying to get justice for these girls because chris is already locked up nicole needs to be locked up as well and people still think that i'm completely bat bat i was gonna say it bat crazy but I'm not. I'm telling you this right now. Everything that I've read, everything that I've looked into, and everything that I've been mentioning over the course of what, the past two months, or whatever have you, has been almost completely spot on. So, and, I, and it's not just me that thinks it, it's all these other YouTubers that I've watched and witnessed and reacted to and talked to and so forth like that. And we also have some important information coming here soon. I might have an in depth look. Um, at Chris Watts, and I'll tell you why here soon, but I'm waiting for uh, everything to go through um, with this person. So um, stay tuned, subscribe, turn on notifications. So when it does come live, you guys will be the first to know. But with that being said, let's get into this husband's father murder annihilator inside the Chris Watts case. Let's take a look. Today on an all new Dr. Phil. I miss Dr. Phil's. Watts killed his wife and children. He annihilated his family. He had to break their bones to get them in this hole. Then lied to the world. Where are ways that you can make someone disappear? That's a hard question to answer. He laughs. He thinks he's the smartest person in the room. He's, he's not. not. He died. It was an Stupid. oh my god moment. That only Dr. Phil can do. The scariest part is a narcissist thinks he can get away with it. It was an unthinkable crime that left people asking, Dr. Phil, who does this kind of thing? Chris Watts, a handsome and seemingly doting husband and father, seemed to have it all. He and his he wife, did. Shannon, had two beautiful daughters and, and a, a third son on the, way. on the way. Then, in the early morning hours of August 13th, Shannon and the children mysteriously disappeared. Chris went on TV and begged for his family's safe return. And laughed about but it. oddly, he didn't shed one single tear. Nothing. And then in a disturbing twist, Chris Watts is arrested, charged with their murders, and even more horrifyingly, confesses to disposing of their bodies in a heartless and shocking manner. So what kind of man would do such a thing? A narcissist. Well, behind the smiles of this picture-perfect family were dark secrets that led to murder, and we're going to talk about how yes. you can see those things coming. We're going to talk about it now. Take a look. Let's do it. Dr. Phil's side of it. Uh, 
a dark mystery in Frederick, Colorado. Concern in Frederick right now about a pregnant woman who is missing along with her two daughters. He laughed about it. Father and husband left behind <coughs> in a very empty house. I have no inclination to where they're at right now. When I got home yesterday, it was like a ghost town. She wasn't here. Kids weren't here. I have no idea like where they went. But in a video that statement just wants to make you punch this man in the face. Video confession days later, Watts told his father he murdered Shannon in a fit of rage, claiming she killed their children. Which that was disproved. The husband of a missing pregnant woman is in jail and now charged with her murder. The day Watts killed his family, he called his daughter's school to say they would no longer be attending. And he also contacted a real estate agent about selling his home. That's what's messed up. The innocent laughter of children is gone. Mommy has a baby in her belly. Again. And the story of a once growing family ended. We have two kids. We live in Colorado and he's the best thing that has ever happened to me. <laughs> Despite portraying a happy family on social media, text messages between Shannon and Watts in the weeks leading up to the Got murders, worse and worse. A fractured relationship. Prosecutors say Watts killed his family because of an affair he was having with the co-worker Nicole Kessinger. In a recorded interview with police the day Shannon and the girls were found dead, Kessinger appeared distraught. Oh, sad, and she's pregnant. Do we God, and they're so cute. They're so little. She didn't the care. Remains, where are their bodies? Now, Chris Watts, who everyone described as calm, loving, and sweet, had murdered his children and wife in cold blood. Because of an evil presence. He told investigators where to find their bodies on a property owned by the company he worked for. And a dark the senseless deaths of their loved ones weren't enough, the discovery of their bodies was gut-wrenching. And again, there's five uh, cameras out there. Where's that footage? Just throwing that out there. Shannon's body was found in a shallow grave near the girl's bodies, submerged for days in storage tanks filled with crude oil. Christopher Watts has been charged with three counts of first-degree murder and three counts of tampering with evidence. His motive was simple, Your Honor. He had a desire for a fresh start. Get a divorce. You don't annihilate your family and throw them away like garbage. Court sends murderer Chris Watts to life in prison for killing his pregnant wife and daughters. I trusted you to take care of them, not kill them. And they also trusted you. Thank you, God, for everything. You heartless monster. Prison is too good for you. Now he's crying because he knows he's going away for life. Now, I'm here with my really good friend, Nancy Grace. She is an American legal commentator and television journalist as well as founder of Crime Online. So Nancy, welcome. Please welcome Nancy. So they're bringing in the big guns now. So you guys can sit there and stop telling me that I don't know what I'm talking about when we got some big guns in here, okay? <coughs> Nancy, when you saw this case, I mean, what was it about this that you think captured the nation's attention? While he, Chris Watts, is trying to figure out how he's going to get with his lover. I mean, his wife has only gone a couple of weeks to see her family, and bam, everything was over in those few weeks. She was out buying self-help books. And just thinking of her, you know, in the bookstore looking for self-help books, how can I improve myself? And the whole time your husband is plotting your murder. One of the things... He plotted it. I, I've noticed, and, you know, I've been involved in forensic psychology from the... I did a... Uh, postdoctoral fellowship in forensic psychology mm -hmm. immediately when I, I graduated so I've been doing this for 40 plus years and you see certain characteristics and traits in these people and he started making really dumb mistakes really early which so dumb people often do because they see things only from their point of view now before I play the interview I want you to watch for some of the signs that we look for when you're doing a behavioral analysis, when you're looking at the psychology of a criminal. He doesn't refer to his family in any kind of intimate in present way. He tense. doesn't use their names. It's called distancing. Them. He uses pronouns she. like they and those kids. 
He only says their names one time. He says Shannon once. He says Bella once. And when he says Bella, he talks about her. It was, not now. Like she is already dead. And then I also want you to look at his physical distancing. He's in closed body position and he's rocking back and forth in he's a self soothing sort of way. And he yeah. keeps getting further and further from the questions. And watch him licking his lips. And the fact of the matter is, psychologically, he's trying to wipe away everything he's saying. He looks Take to the. He also looks to the left. He chuckles, no emotions, no tears, no nothing. I mean, you don't even have to be a complete doctor, psychologist to even see that this guy has complete BS in his face, including Nicole. You don't see her cry until she talks about the babies. But even when she cries, it's like you can tell a fake cry to a real cry. I'm just throwing that out there because I've seen fake crying. I've seen real crying. And you can tell when somebody's just doing it to get attention and put the the all poor me on me instead of the people that lost their lives. So that's why I'm so dedicated to this case is because Nicole has complete so much BS that's coming out of her face and her mouth and her eyes and and you, and the the police did nothing. You can't tell me what the years of dedication and education and uh, experience that those police officers had. They didn't see anything when it came to Nicole Kessinger. It's it just still flabbergasts me. Wherever they're at, <coughs> like I have no inclination to where they're at right now. Yes, like, you do. I've exhausted like every friend that I know of, and every friend that I have has called friends that Shanann has that maybe I didn't know about, and it's just like there's it's like it's vanished. Look at like, his handshake. Not, like when I got home yesterday, it was like a ghost town. Like she wasn't here. Kids weren't. Here. He said too, and I know I keep pa or pausing, but you guys have mentioned that you don't want me to. Uh, talk while they're talking but he even mentioned that when he had all the lights on it's not because he didn't he wanted them home it's because he was scared he literally was hearing things he literally was seeing things i don't know if that's possible with the devil's breath that i talked about yesterday in my video where um, he possibly had a drink from nicole kessinger and nicole kessinger possibly had conjured something up in the basement with her friends her satanic friends and what have you we don't know for sure if that is a thing, but there's rumors, there's theories, there's opinions. We're obviously trying to figure this out because one, two, we want Nicole Kessinger brought to justice. We want her to take an, uh, take accountability for what she had done, which she broke up a home. She destroyed a home. Yes, physically that Chris did it, but she mentally and emotionally did all this stuff to Chris in order for him to do this. She knew exactly what she was doing. She was tearing a home apart. She knew that they were together. There's no divorce. I mean, I keep saying this and more and more and more, but there's some people that state that Nicole's innocent. How? I just don't get it. So let's continue. Here, I have no idea like where they went, and it doesn't. It's just earth shattering. I don't feel like this is even real right now. It's like a nightmare. He thought there was an evil up. presence. Bella was gonna start kindergarten next next Monday. Was. And they they were just getting ready to start start back again. I'm just hoping right now that she's somewhere safe and maybe she's just, she's there. But right now it's she's just like, there? if she's vanished, like I want her back so bad. I want those kids back so bad. There's no cameras in the backyard or anything like that. So there was. It's, it's really hard to even suspect anything right now as far as how she could have left. Why would you say that? Just to, like in an interview to want to have your kids found, your wife found, you're like, oh, there's no, uh, there's no evidence to show there's foul play or um, the cameras are gone. Why would you say that? I'd be begging whoever has my kids, please bring them home. I need them. I want them. I can't be without them. I, I, I'm so distraught. I'd, I'd be bawling my tears out if my kids were gone. I don't even know if I could do an interview. So just calling the BS right now. Dr. Phil sees the BS too. Or if someone came, picked her up or somebody took her. I've, I've never seen something like this in my lifetime unless it was on TV or a movie. And this, this doesn't seem real at all. It just seems like I'm, I'm living in a nightmare and I can't get out of it. I just want them home so bad. There you go. When I saw that interview, I said, we're looking at a killer right here. These are signals like a Navy flag man. 
waving around what's going on. All right, now coming up, after Shannon Watts and her children were reported missing, police went to search the house and talk to her husband, Chris. They videotaped the whole thing. We're gonna show you that video and tell you why police may have already thought they knew he was the main suspect. We'll be right back. Oh, they knew. The way he was moving, the way he was standing, his gestures. Did you tell your mother-in-law that she went to a friend's list today? Who was she supposed to go to? That's all she, that's all she told me. And later, research on psychopaths, and that's a clinical term. It's easy for these people to <clears throat> kill other people because they don't feel stressed. It's a DNA thing. The DNA thing? New video obtained shows the moments after Chris Watts murdered his pregnant wife and two young daughters. It comes from a neighbor's security camera. It shows Watts walk out of his home in Frederick, then backs his truck up in the driveway, parking it so a portion of the bed is in the garage. It also shows Watts walking around his truck and putting items inside, including a red gasoline can. Because he was going to blow up Watts Survey 19. From his home. Today we're going to take you inside the mind of a killer inside the mind of Chris Watts, who you just saw on surveillance calmly loading up his truck before driving off with the bodies of his dead family in the back. Well, the girls were killed out that survey in 19. Well, we've, we've called believed. in experts who have dealt with hundreds of cases involving sociopaths, but they say none even come close to Chris Watts. Really? The Chris Watts case is one of the most disturbing cases that I've ever seen. Chris Watts is what we call a family He does this a lot. I haven't seen many cases like this because family annihilators usually commit suicide after the murders. Chris didn't do that. Because he Chris wanted to be with Nicole. He's also a narcissist. He is the most important person in his world. There are some people that were even stating that Shanann was the narcissist. I've watched a lot of her lives. I've witnessed her her videos and stuff like that. And I feel like I'm a, a definitely a good judge of character. I mean, I have my moments of doubt and stuff like that, but I just feel like Nicole wasn't or uh, Shanann wasn't the problem. It was it was Nicole. It was Chris. They were the ones that wanted to be together. And they showed their, I don't care, I'm going to do whatever I want. So that's why he didn't take or self-harm himself. It's because he wanted to be with Nicole. So. And he's also a <coughs> And a narcissistic psychopath is a really bad combo. How he just decided to erase his family. He threw him in the back of his pickup truck, drove him and threw his daughters into an oil bin, buried his wife in a shallow grave. Chris, like most killers, is not terribly bright which is why he was caught so fast who was she supposed to go to he was caught fast because of this woman over here nicole atkinson she threw a wrench in the whole thing for him because he was gonna take care of the rest of it when he got home but because this angel of a woman over here she brought this so early and that's why everything got thrown apart when i saw chris being interviewed i said Wow. When I got home yesterday, it was like a ghost town. Like, she wasn't here. Kids weren't here. This guy just gave away the farm. When he hugged himself and the shrugs, that's defensive. He pretty much just confessed to murdering his wife and children. I know that Dr. Phil has a background in criminal psychology, and I'd be very interested to see what he thinks. That's why we're here. <laughs> Well, Candace DeLong is someone that I have tremendous respect for. She is a former FBI criminal profiler and criminologist. The big she guns are here. Is the host of Investigation Discoveries Deadly Women. Now, Steve Cardian is a former detective and author of a really important book that teaches women how to protect themselves. It's the new superpower for women. Candace, let me start with you. You saw this tape. You've seen some of his interviews. Got what some pretty eyes. See? The interview he gave to the TV people on his porch 
they did a, a, a close-in shot. His eyes were neither red nor swollen. This was not a man that had been up all night. Exactly. Crying. Another thing that occurred to me, he, he says, uh, yeah, when I came home, nobody was here. It was like a ghost town. It was a ghost town. He made it a ghost town by killing everyone else that lived there. You bring up such an important point. Let's take a quick look at that little snippet. There's, it's like, it's vanished. Like, she's not, like, when I got home yesterday, it was like a ghost town. Like, she wasn't here. Kids weren't here. Like, I have no idea. He doesn't like, even know what he's went. saying. This is a guy with two children and a pregnant wife vanished. And he, he, like you say, there's no redness in his eyes. That is such a good point. He doesn't look like he is. She was a spot all. on. Yeah, well, it's what I don't see that tells yeah. me something. I didn't see here. a wedding band. Has he already gotten rid oh, of that? I didn't look. I didn't look at that. Oh! Smiles and, and laughter that was completely I didn't even look at that. When he was talking about Bella, he says she was. That's final as an investigator. That jumps out to me as he, he knows that she's already gone. And people that are narcissistic and think they're getting away with something, it's called duping the light. They can't help but gloat when they think they're pulling the wool over your eyes. He so right there. His performance. Yeah, and so, so let's take a look at this oil tank where the bodies were discovered. This is where he put his children. Dr. And, and I do, do want to reiterate that his children had to be put in special caskets and they were not allowed to be seen by the family because of how much their bodies had soaked up the oil, which is completely so disrespectful. And that's why I don't... A lot of people are like, well, Chris deserves to be forgave and stuff. You cannot be... I'm sorry, but... To hurt these little ones. They they had no reason for this. And their bodies had to be completely and sealed and encased in these caskets. And they couldn't be seen by their family, their grandparents, their uncles, their aunts. Because of his actions. Because he wanted to be with somebody else. That's what pisses me off the most. Yes, I do believe wholeheartedly for Shanann that she is the victim, but I'm fighting for these kids. I'm fighting for Shanann as well, but these kids deserve so much more, and I would fight for my kids to the end of time. I would fight and kill and defend my kids, and this is, guy took away his family, and these beautiful little girls just didn't deserve this, and that's what upsets me the most. I'm going to get teary-eyed again. Oh. Feeder trap mm -hmm. is eight inches wide. The width of those girls shoulder to shoulder is nine and a half inches. So he had to now, have. I'm, I'm, I don't want to say this to be Disrespectful. too graphic, but you have to understand the nature of the beast we're talking about here. He had to break their bones to get them in there. And when they tried to lift the girls up, their skin came off. They called it, they, uh, doctors always have nice words for things. They called it degloving because they're. Oh my gosh. Left him there. So when you say, Dr. Phil, who does this? Who does this is a malignant narcissist psychopath. That's what makes these people so dangerous. Coming up, after his family vanished, Chris Watts wasn't acting like a grieving husband, as we say. He certainly wasn't acting like a grieving father. Now we know the man begging for his wife and daughters to come home had killed them all. We're going to look for more hidden clues in his interviews next and talk more about what pathology lies inside this individual. And we're going to talk about the fact that these predators are walking among us. We'll be right back. That's what's scary. Hi. My daddy is this is what gets me. She loved her dad, and this is what that he did to her. That was Bella Watts singing about her daddy, her hero, just weeks before. And became the villain. He murdered her. Let's take a look at Chris Watts talking to the police. Watch carefully at his behavior. How long have you guys been married? So... And yeah, I need to get over it, is what people have mentioned. Yeah. And this is very unusual behavior. <laughs> What's this door right here go to? Locked. Do you have a key for it? Locked. Get here and just play the bathroom. 
So you normally keep it locked? Yeah, because they, yeah. They would go in there and they'd be in soap. Like last time we had Vaseline everywhere. You know, so that was not fun. So does she normally make the beds, the kids' beds? No, no. Did you tell your mother-in-law that she went to a friend's this today? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who's what friend? Close to a friend's house, but that's all I mean. This statement so is completely bull. That's all she told me. Said she's going to a friend's house to take the kids. What, what friend? I can tell you right now when my fiance goes to a friend's house with her kids or our kids, whatever have you, I'm asking questions. Where are you at? How long are you going to be? I mean, I'm not doing it to be uh, controlling. I just want to know. So if anything happens, I can either go there or I can call um, the person that she's with or whatever have you. I just want to like, I'd like to know where she's at. Just make sure she's okay. And this guy has no idea where she went. She just went with friends. And then that morning he called the school, canceled the school, can't or got ready to sell their house. And, he, and even the realtor was like, so where's Shanann? I haven't heard from her. Why is it just you that's talking? Just saying. I'm going to try to run some things down using her phone and then see if we can't find somebody. Um, if nobody has heard anything at all, then uh, we'll probably pull the trigger a little bit Susan Constantine is a renowned body language expert. What do you see? Well, first of all, his emotions are detached. When somebody is concerned about someone that's missing, you're going to see pain or suffering in their forehead, this wrinkling up, the concern. When we see him pacing back and forth, that's internal anxiety. So it's a self-soothing gesture too. The ones where he's holding his hand like this, other moments he's holding his head, and that is showing that he's concerned, but it's also panic. There's lots of emotions. He's freaking out. So whatever we're thinking and feeling is being exhibited through our nonverbal communication. Well, let's look at him watching some surveillance video. This is at his neighbor's house. His neighbors had cameras. And so they caught him on camera backing his truck into the garage. He never even thought that was about the it. Bodies in, and he's there seeing this footage for the first time. Watch this. It doesn't make sense, though. Park, out there on the side, I just want to get everything back in. It'd be easier to lug everything out there, all the tools that I had to bring in. Just trying to get it all Like, his body language is... So like bad. Like he's freaking out. The first time that he thinks, holy, <laughs> I'm caught. <laughs> Pretty much. It was definitely an oh my god moment. There was no doubt. So when he was first looking at the video, it didn't hit because he didn't know that they what he was about to see. The minute he saw that, oh my God, that's when his hands came up, he started to pace. And if you look at it close, his also his See, flushing. He turns his back to it. He doesn't want to look he at it. He can't. Yeah, he can't he, look at it because he's it's scared to look at it. Moments. He almost has to deflect from it. Well, after Chris left, the police spoke to his neighbor alone. All right. Appreciate your time. Thanks. Hopefully, something comes up here. Yeah. No. Even the neighbor knew. Right. But watch, you'll see him get out. And he walks back and forth a couple times. We completely honest with you. My wife and I were kind of wondering when she was on vacation if something happened because I've heard them pull out screaming at each other at the top of their lungs and he gets crazy. Really? That's pretty recently? Yeah. Well, that's, and that's why she went and visited people because she wanted to get away from the situation. Coming up next, inside the room where Chris Watts was interrogated for more than six hours. You won't believe the reason he laughs when he's being questioned about killing his wife and his children. It's disgusting. Plus what his mistress told police. That's next. Oh! What are...
are ways, because I need to make sure that you know what I'm talking about, what are ways that you can make someone disappear? I wanted her, this girl, to investigate Nicole. I feel like if there was a, 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 because of the man that was in there, she was flirting with him and she was talking with him like she's buddy, buddy with him. I feel like this woman would have destroyed Nicole. She would have brought everything out. They, I mean, still don't know why, because apparently she's a protective witness because she came forward to clear her name. Bull BS. Stop with that crap. The witness protection, whatever. That's a bunch of malarkey. I'm just throwing that out there. If this woman would have interrogated, not interviewed, interrogated, and not had Chris or uh, Nicole Kessinger's father, daddy inside there, it would have went a whole different way. I guarantee it. Just saying. The defendant coldly and deliberately ended four lives. Now he shows emotion. Not in a fit of rage, not by way of accident, but in a calculated and sickening manner. That man should have investigated Nicole Kessinger more. What must Bella, age four, and Celeste, age three, must have experienced or thought is their father, the one man on this planet who was supposed to nurture and protect them, was snuffing out their lives. The man seated to my right smothered his daughters. The heinous murders of Shannon Watts and her young daughters, Bella and Celeste, has people asking what kind of father could be such a monster that he not only kills his pregnant wife, but his two beautiful little girls? Well, the answer is someone with a narcissistic personality disorder. The scariest part is a narcissist actually thinks he can get away with it. I mean, he thought he and was going to. caught so easily because they don't look at the other points of view. Take a look at this video of Chris being interrogated and pay attention to the very end. What are ways, because I need to make sure that you know what I'm talking about, what are ways that you can make someone disappear? I mean, it's like, I don't mean that's hard. And, that's and, hard I know that, and I know this stuff. That's a hard question to answer. Right. Because I, I didn't. It has nothing to do with this disappearance. Right. Yeah, now, he laughs and he smiles because he's, at this point, he still thinks he's the smartest person in the room, right? Yeah. He's not. He still believes he's the smartest person in the room. They always do. Research on psychopaths, and that's a clinical term, and, and, it, and it, the hallmark is that they don't feel guilt, remorse, or empathy. It's easy for these people to <clears throat> kill other people because they don't feel stress. There's been research on psychopaths that oftentimes their pulse doesn't even increase when they're committing a crime. Uh, That's nuts. Or ly lying on a lie detector test. They don't get nervous like the rest of us do. It's a DNA thing. There is a difference between the irresistible impulse and the impulse not resisted. Now think about that. There is an irresistible impulse where something happens and you just don't have the ability to resist. You know, the crime of passion or... That's not passion, I'm just saying. Blackout rage, you're just so incensed you cannot control yourself. Versus the impulse you choose not to resist. And there's every indication that this was a premeditated crime. This, he, this, he did not Oh, he snap, planned, yeah. He right? You, you don't believe he snapped. Absolutely not. He Snapping planned this. is uh, when sudden emotion and shock happens. Uh, you walk in the door of your home, you go in the bedroom and your spouse is with your sister or something like that and, and you just lose it and you might pick up a lamp and throw it. That is snapping. Snapping is not premeditatedly taking the lives of three people. As soon as he had his hands around his uh, the, the older... He tried to kill his unborn son by giving oxycodone to his wife. That in itself, to begin with, shows that he was thinking about murder and all that stuff of his family. He wanted to get rid of the child first. If that didn't work, plan B. Get rid of Shanann and Bella and Cece. The first child that he killed first... He could have said, no, no, this is not right. I'm, I'm, no, I've got to find another way. 
he killed her and then did it again to the other child. Right. As only a psychopath could. Chris was having a secret affair with a co-worker. I don't know how much he banked on those two running off together because he was seeing other women as well behind Shanann's back. I don't know if it's, I don't know about more. A grieving family confronts the man who killed their pregnant daughter and their grandchildren. He wanted just Nicole. Lives of my daughter Shannon, Bella, Celeste, and Nico. I want the world to know that our daughter and her children were so loved by us. So you ask, why not just divorce this person? You know, right? Exactly. If you want out so bad, why not just divorce? Understand, a narcissist wants to be the center of attention. The narcissist has all kinds of currency. So what happens if he divorces? He still has financial burdens. They had taken bankruptcy once before. They were in debt again. They well, were get over it. behind on their mortgage. They were $8,000 in credit card next. debt. They were totally drowning. And they had another baby on the way when they already were in debt. But if you murder the family, you make money because there's $20,000 life insurance policies on the two children and a $50,000 life insurance policy on her. So you go $90,000 to the good, and more importantly, you become the object of sympathy. I mean, that the seems like the motive there, the but still. While his wife and children were away, Chris was having a secret affair with a co-worker named Here we go. Nicole Kessinger. They talked to her. Take a look. I think a lot of people are going to probably assume that I was the catalyst for his movement. But no. I don't think, you know, not me, like, instructing him, but him deciding to do that because he had me in his life and because he was so, like, infatuated with what we had going on. But, you know, like, I try to put the, the reason to it at the end. Like, why would you wipe out your family to be with me like it doesn't it doesn't like compute it's like how would that go like hey my family see like the way that she's talking right now like she's overdoing it she's like implying to him to make him believe that why would i be into this the police officer can figure it out for himself but i think she's completely bs right here and i guarantee after this uh, those guys that are on the, the board of uh, Dr. Phil, they're going to see through the lies of Nicole as well. And you think that I'm going to just not be concerned about that? B S. Okay. And by the way, take a look at that picture of her and his wife. Do you notice they look an awful lot alike? Dr. No. Phil, wait, uh, hold on a moment. <laughs> yeah. You shouldn't, Nicole Kessinger should not feel that special. Okay. Amen. Because he was set meeting people on Tinder. You know, I, I don't know how much he banked on those two running off together because he was seeing other women as well behind Shanann's back. Yeah. If they'll do it with you, they'll do it to you. True. Let's, well let's look at this Tinder tape. We just like met at the parking lot in Chick fil A. I don't know, it's, it's I don't know about this girl. I have my. And then um, well, I got something to drink, and then we just. My doubts on her. And he was rough, as in, you know, just. Yeah, he was pulling my hair and putting his arms around my. My. Uh, neck. It was like a, a rape fantasy thing. That's how I, you know, they like, describe it. And again, we're showing him impulse, no impulse control, immediate gratification, and no sense of what's, how this is going to play once your family disappears. What are you going to tell your girlfriend? Exactly. All right, next, the telling text Shannon sent her friend before she was killed. We'll take a look at that. Ooh, we'll I don't back. think I've seen that. So, also, apparently this morning, this morning that hap hap or happened when she found, or Chris found out that he was having a third, he was actually rendezvousing with Nicole at her house before he showed up here. 
Just throwing that out there. <laughs> I like that shirt. That's awesome. Guess, uh, guess, guess when you want to, it happens. <laughs> I want to take a look at where he is told that he failed a polygraph. And, you know, Steve, you've been in that room. I want you to comment on this after we look at it. Do you know where Shannon is now? No. Did you physically cause Shannon's disappearance? No. Are you lying about the last time you saw Shannon? No. Do you want to talk to you about the results, OK? Sure. So, um, it was completely clear that you were not honest during the testing, and I think you already know that. Um, you did not pass the polygraph test. Okay. Okay. So now we need to talk about what actually happened. I feel like you're probably ready to do that. Uh, I didn't, I didn't lie to you on that polygraph, I promise. Chris, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not stop. Stop. I, just stop for a minute. Take a deep breath. Everything that I've just... I have told you, I did not lie on this polygraph. I am, I don't know how much I could, I could tell you right now, like. Oh, he is screwed, he knows. It's not, even, it's not even an option right now because no. you did not pass the polygraph, no. so I know you were being deceptive, so that's not even an issue, an issue right now. The issue right now is what happened to Shanann, Bella, and Celeste. That's the issue right now. Where are they? If we bring in your dad, will you promise me that you'll talk to him? She would have never. You smothered, or Nicole did. He implied that somebody else took life. They were your kids. That's chilling. What's I got goosebumps. Room at that point, from the police point of view, it, when he says "okay," it's it's not something an innocent person. He's confirming that he, he failed the lie detector test, and then he says, "I don't know what else or what I can tell you." They boom in their mind, we got him. What was the moment, what was the first identifiable moment or behavior that indicated that this was going to happen? He didn't want a third baby. He was afraid. He couldn't financially afford that. That's your he problem. He separate, and his wife was not going along with that. And he really fancied himself as a new man. Look how much weight he had lost. He had really gotten himself yeah. in shape. He wanted to hit the reset button. And in his ignorant, immature uh, way, he thought this I was. I wonder if Chris has ever watched things like this. What motivated Chris to kill <coughs> his family isn't even in the book of killing your family motivations. Right. I mean, it just he wanted freedom. He wanted exactly as you described to be free of the problems of daily marital uh, life. Now, Shannon sent a text to a friend and and said, "Here's what I plan to say to him." I know that you need time. I want to give you what you're asking for and respect your space. It is not healthy for me or Nico. I need you to just give a little bit of what I did or didn't do. So I'm not going crazy. Tell, you, she, said, she was Tell fighting me. for her marriage. In my head to figure it out. I know I can't fix this by myself, that we are going to have to work together. And while she's planning this, He's planning her murder. We'll be right back. But yeah, people think that Shanann was the narcissist. Candace, final comments about this. What, 
Act, what do they need to know to understand and protect themselves? Any man uh, that's in a similar situation, uh, murder's not an option. Speak up. You know, I do not want another child, or uh, we're spending too much money. Uh, the kids are not going to private school. Release some of the pressure uh, from the marriage, and it might just get better. And from the woman's point of view, if, or for the wife's point of view, if your husband is under a lot of pressure and is pulling away from you, you need to be very vigilant. And if he is seeing another woman, that woman has his heart, and you are in trouble. Take precautions. Leave if you have to. Nancy? You know, Dr. Phil, I'm just so overcome with the sadness of this case. What I take away from this is, this is the truth. This is what happened. And if you are in a relationship and you're the only one in it and you're trying and trying and trying, if you've got a guy like Chris Watts, it's not going to get better. You need to leave and find your happiness. Yes, what do you think? And, yeah, well, and the other thing is, is that these type of people can be natural performers. They are very likable, they're very approachable, they have they can be very charismatic. And when you tap into things that you find fault with, they become unglued. So look for those signs. Do they have the appropriate emotion that fits what they're saying? If that's a lot of people, off, though, man. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> listen to that because that's telling you it is off. And don't make <sighs> uh, excuses for it. Steve, you're an enforcer here. You're a policeman here. You deal with these perpetrators. Tell these people how to protect. Dr. Phil, it takes about seven Just times leave. in domestic issues before a woman will come forward and take action against her husband. Seven? So, uh, in this case with Watts, he had, he had a great front stage. Look for those little things, those little subtle things behind the stage that are going to tell you that there's a problem. And it, it may be some, not be something you need to contact law enforcement for, but reach out to the social services, reach out to a psychologist. And I just want to say that law enforcement did an excellent job. He was a horrible criminal, and thank God. For I that. felt like they could have done more. Don't be in denial. I mean, if something doesn't feel right, acknowledge that to yourself. Don't, I'm not saying give up, but I'm saying also be aware in your mind and take precautions. Uh, my wife, Robin, is one of the foremost ambassadors uh, in the fight against domestic violence and she just returned from Capitol Hill where she testified about this and some other issues with women about domestic violence and she has something that she created called the Aspire app and the Aspire app is an app that you put on your smartphone and you can download it for free and it looks like a news app it just oh. says news, and, and when you open it, sure enough, it gives you the news. But it actually is an alert because you tap it three times and it sends out a message to whoever you have pre-programmed it that says, I'm in trouble and I need help and I need it now. You guys need that. And this is a lifeline. Don't that abuse saves it. Lives, but right? That's right. And sometimes your abuser will take your phone away from you. So I always like to tell everyone, if you know that you have a friend, a coworker, or a family member being abused, and maybe they have had their phone taken away, do your best to sneak a phone to the victim and download that app. And there's always a way. Find that way to get a phone to a victim. So they have it, they can hide it, and that's their lifeline out of that situation. And especially if they have children, they're on that app. There, there is a page that tells shelters and uh, other places to go when they are ready to get out. But, but also it says the safe way to exit a, a violent situation. So there's all kinds of information on there. Just Very think if they, they would have used this Very proud of for the Chris app. Watts and on Capitol Shenan. Hill as one of the top two apps. They could possibly at, still at be here. Educating. Uh, the victims and everyone else on domestic violence. So yeah. I do hope that people will go to whengeorgiasmiled.org and download the app. It's free and uh, it will save lives. I'm very proud of that. Yeah. And um, think about it ahead of time. If you know you're in a tough situation, 
to make plans because we don't need any more Nicole so Kessinger I, and Chris I hope Watts. I understand more about what happened after today. Thank you so much, Candace, Nancy. So thank you, yeah. Steve. All of this has been so enlightening. I've learned a lot today. I hope you have as well. So I want to thank all of my guests today for their invaluable expertise. I want to remind you that this story is really about these victims. Little Celeste and Bella will never get to grow up, and Shannon will never get to welcome her baby son. And Chris Watts will spend the rest of his life behind bars paying Good. for this heinous crime. May Shannon, Bella, Celeste, and her unborn son, Nico, rest in peace. Amen. For more information, go to drphil.com. Thanks for watching. That's why myself, that's why all these YouTubers are doing this is because we know that there's more to this. We know that, yes, we want Celeste, Be uh, Bella, CC, and so forth. And I want so heartedly to have Nicole, like, why, why did she go in hiding if she has nothing to hide? If she didn't do anything, I mean, she, I'm not even going to get into it right now. It just, it's. <sighs> And it's so distraught when other people that are supporting Nicole and supporting Chris, there are people that are writing to Chris like they want to marry him. They want to have his baby. He's in prison. Why would you have, want to have a murderous spouse that's in prison? You will never be able to, be able to connect with him or talk. It just doesn't make sense. And But again, with Nicole, she's apparently protective custody or she's gone and we don't know where she's at or whatever have you why is she hiding if she has nothing to hide that's what bothers me so dr phil all these other guys that are experienced in their fields they all see through chris watts and nicole kessinger's bullshit uh i'm not saying the word but for those that <laughs> That are defending Nicole and uh, Nicole and Chris, just stop. There's no reason to. I mean, I can't tell you what to do, but it's just ridiculous that you guys are defending them. Just saying. So I hopefully you guys enjoyed my reaction. Hopefully enjoyed my uh, partake and my theories and my opinions over the course of how many ep or videos you guys continuously want me to look into this case. There's more stuff that comes up here and there, little bits and pieces here and there, but things are hopefully we'll see something happen with nk i mean even they they could uh interrogate chris again just go to the place hook him up to a lie detector test was nicole involved was nicole there was nicole the one that took the lives of the girls that's all they have to do that's all they have to do it's right there they can do it so comment your thoughts down below don't forget to subscribe for more content like the video for obviously the justice the complete justice of Shanann, Bella, Cece, and baby Nico. And we will see you guys in the next one. So please take care. Keep it safe. Use that app if you need to. It's designed for you ladies out there. It's probably designed for anybody that has been in a domestic abuse and needs a self um, or a uh, safe out. And do what Dr. Phil said. Download that app and uh, protect yourself. And we'll see you guys in the next video. So, Take care, keep it real, keep it safe, and as always, keep nerding on, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace.